Okay. Cool. Hi, everybody. It's Marietta. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I have an amazing guest with me, Victor Cosetto, who is also healer and nutritionist and he's founder of Vitagenics. So we are going to have a very, very, very lovely conversation about how can we raise the consciousness of planet by actually healing and detoxing, not only emotionally, but also physically. Thank you so much, Victor, for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me, Marietta. It's wonderful to speak with you. Absolutely. So why don't we start? Because I'm always asking this question and I'm curious, what is your story? Like, why did you become, why did you become a healer and nutritionist? Oh. And, and what's your why? Why do you do what you, what you do, your mission to, to heal people and uplift humanity? Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. I'll try to make it short because it's a very, very long story. Uh, but I guess I, I kind of had an inherent interest from childhood. And then um, I think it really started to solidify more after about 10 years old when I got into judo and it was all, all this kind of mystical information, you know, and it looked like magic. Martial arts was like magical and very different uh, being born an Italian American, that Asian perspective of life was quite different. And so I just kept, you know, looking into things and this idea of holistic health, etc. I got introduced to through various other cultures along the way. And then not until decades later did I really commit my, myself and decide that, wow, I need to share this information formally, officially, uh, not just as a hobby. Mm, beautiful. So then you decided to heal, start healing other people, or what was the initial first step that you decided to take? So I think originally it was out of curiosity and then thinking that I was healing myself and others by giving advice. Mm -hmm. And then I started to see some pretty profound impacts from people from sharing little tidbits of hidden information. Mm -hmm. um, and again, not in a formal capacity, but kind of just like helping a friend here and there, mm -hmm. helping mm -hmm. colleagues, associates. And then really gelled when my father actually got sick um, this was about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. At that point, I already had so much experience and information and I decided, okay, I need to formalize. And then that's when I actually put together Vitagenics mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then started to put it out there on the internet, mm -hmm. um, you know, create the website and then uh, formalized my education also because I'm a Actually, yeah. my background is a computer scientist. Right, right. I read that. And right. psychologist, a so sociology. So you have a very yes. interesting background. Right. So it's a very, even an odd combination. So you can tell even from the beginning, a computer scientist with a double minor in psychology and sociology, it yeah. doesn't make any right. sense. <laughs> it doesn't make <laughs> Absolutely. any sense. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I but love it, did, it. Yeah, it did for me. And so even like my interest in psychology goes back also to my teen years. Mm -hmm. And I was very into psychoneuroimmunology mm. or they say pni mm -hmm. because that was one of the only western um areas of study that had this mind body connection mm. it was about how your state of mind affects your immune system mm. and, very good i love yeah, it and so we, we know this clearly beyond a doubt and so i was like okay this is a a western educational endeavor that i can actually accept mm -hmm. But I didn't choose it as my major back mm -hmm. then, right? So it remained mm -hmm. more um, in the background, so to say. Right, right. So yeah, so let's go from there. So how do you think the mind impacts the body? Like mind over matter. Is it just mm -hmm. the way we think, the way we feel? But, or is it also, I mean, I know you're going to say, yes, of course, it's the way what we consume, like what we eat. But I want to I dig deeper because it's so... It's, there are so many layers, right? And I know yes. that, especially you talk about detoxing, the importance of detoxing. So yes. why is it so important to detox, not only emotionally, but obviously we're talking about the food and nutrition and like, what is the percentage of, of food that is playing the role in, let's say, raising the consciousness because we want to uh -huh. be higher frequency, right? Right, right. So I guess... To, to simplify it, like you, you mentioned, right there, our thinking, our emotions, and also our beliefs. So these three things. So as we make 
conscious decisions to choose clean food and to detox, we're affecting the way we think. Mm-hmm. It's going to have an emotional impact. Like we, we should be more emotionally involved with our food. Our relationship with our food should be a good one, not a bad one, right? So we want to build trust and confidence, not fear, mm-hmm. right? So we, we want to be confident even that we can handle some bad food sometimes. We don't want to be too strict, right? So, so if we are detoxing, if we are, well, the body is always detoxing, but if we are helping the body to detox, we can tolerate a bit more of our toxic world, so to say. Mm-hmm. And again, I, I don't really want to create a negative image about right. our world being toxic, but, but we know, right? So we, many of us are perhaps even trapped in an environment that is more toxic uh, than it should be, right? Mm-hmm. Than, than a human has adapted or evolved to be. But we can assist ourselves, mm. right? And so when we talk about thinking, right? So now we mm-hmm. become conscious about, okay, I know, I know that, you know, maybe this is not good for me. Maybe the air is dirty, but I have to do this because I need this job. Mm-hmm. So if we aid ourselves with detoxing, we can feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit mm-hmm. more relaxed. Mm-hmm. We start affecting those emotions. Mm-hmm. We start building confidence. And the more we think about it, the more conscientious we are about what we eat, the, the food choices we make, et cetera, mm-hmm. the more we start to change our belief system, mm. which is, it's really hard to change our beliefs, right? Like we, you know, we can use mantras and mm-hmm. all of these other things. Mm-hmm. It's like, like any kind of even sports training or whatever, mm-hmm. we really have to hammer it home. Yeah. So we have to really be conscious about our food choices and how we're going to assist ourselves. And of course, we'll also realize these things are good for the planet when we make better food choices, Mm. right? So everything is holistic, Mm -hmm. right? We become a more responsible citizen, so to say, of the planet when we become more conscientious. Mm. You know, I find it so interesting because uh, there are people who decide consciously, I'm going to eat clean food. They decide because maybe they read the book and or someone inspired them or maybe they watch your YouTube channel, right? And they decide consciously, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start eating clean food. But then on the other hand, you have people who I feel like they go through awakening and as a result of that, they change their diet. Like I can tell from my personal experience. Um, I mean, I was never a big fan of eating meat necessarily, mm-hmm. but I remember like the more uh, I started to meditate and I was, I was raising my vibration of my body. I just lost this, 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 this feeling of even like eat meat. You know what I mean? Like Mm. I lost interest so completely. It's not that I don't want to, it's just, it's almost like I can because I would feel Mm. emotions of other living organisms. You know what I mean? Uh, Oh, yes. I I think that happens to a lot of people. And I think when this is happening, you're kind of, we're kind of tapping into like a group consciousness or even, even if it's not consciousness, if I don't want to sound too woo woo, <laughs> we can even talk about like just the subliminal, the subliminal information that's out there. So, you know, all around us, there's this idea that meat is not good for us. Right. And we see the way the animals are treated in these right what we call CAFO operations, right? Mm -hmm. These confinement animal feeding organizations. Mm -hmm. It's horrifying. Yeah. So the the meat itself is actually not a bad thing. I actually eat more meat in Uh order to elevate, but it's because I'm very conscious about choosing pastured meats. Mm -hmm. But I think in in general, most people are not aware Mm -hmm. of of the of the reality that we can eat good meat true which is good for the planet but mm-hmm. again if we as we tap into kind of the mainstream mm-hmm. what influences us yes it's horrifying right what is happening yes. to animals and so my my way personally and even how i work with other people my way to combat that is to not avoid the meat but rather embrace the small farmers yeah which Right, because they are giving the animal now responsible, of course, small farmers. And like there are places like the Savory Institute, and there are individuals like Joel Salatin, and there's the Western Price Foundation, etc. And they explain to us how when we support the small farmer mm-hmm. that is doing things responsibly, 
these people are actually giving animals quality of life. Mm, so if we it. support them, right, they have quality of life. The meat is far mm -hmm. more nutritious, right? So, and, and again, it gets connected to this whole holistic thing, right? That yes. we are omnivores. Yes. And if we all suddenly became vegan, Mm -hmm. we would destroy the planet very interesting point of view you're probably yeah. the first person who is sharing this point of view in fact that's how we connected because <laughs> you made yes, a comment right. under my youtube channel <laughs> yes love yes. it i just remember um right, you know right. what so i very very interesting point of view and i absolutely actually i agree with you but i couldn't tell you, i'm gonna share my point of view it's not necessary that i don't want to eat meat it was i remember the time i did the vipassana silence retreat I think this was in Hawaii and there was this little chicken walking around and I, I connected with the chicken. Like it was probably sixth day or seventh day mm -hmm. in my silence retreat. And I, I connected like literally I felt one mm -hmm. with this chicken. Mm -hmm. And so after that experience, it's almost like I just can't, even if I wanted to, it's like something within me is like, I can't. It's it would it feels like I would eat you, a human. You know what I mean? Right. So right, it's like right, I know I it's extreme, but it's I I, right. I I I guess it comes down to individuals. Like whatever you feel is the right thing to do as long as you doing you do it consciously with love and you're not hurting any anybody. And like you shared, like all these different resources. I we can even share links below in video if people mm. want to learn. I think that that really matters. Yes, right. You see, you have to look within. And I think that's amazing. Like if we, like, again, right, to, to realize that we're all connected, everything is connected. And so if we have these feelings uh, of empathy, mm -hmm. right, towards the other animals, like we don't want to eat them. It's like, right, you, you know, you can't like eat your your pets or your friends, or et cetera, <laughs> right? right? However... Huh? I would like to extend that same empathy and courtesy to the plants among us because True. that's a good right. Point so too. it's the same thing in a way. It's like, you know, there's this asparagus over there. That's like, well, mm -hmm. Hey, what about me? You got no problem. Like <laughs> ripping me out of the ground and chewing on me. Right. So that's a good point. That's a good right? point. Yes. So as, and when, as we expand, but like this idea, so the idea of empathy is fantastic. And as we expand our empathy, and our understanding how everything is connected. You know, like the lion and tiger, they're not evil. Right, right, right. Dol True. Dolphins are not evil, True. but they're carnivores. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. right? They, and they even play with their food, right? Yeah. So as we expand our empathy and understanding, we'll start to gather more knowledge and understanding. And there's a there was a story about a, a farmer who, yeah, they, they would only... Um, at the a cow when a cow's life would end on mm -hmm. the farm it wasn't so often it wasn't again it wasn't one of these huge operations and they found that when it was time when the family needed more meat mm -hmm. they would go out and a cow would have presented itself oh wow are you serious oh yes. my god so wow if you look you will find stories like this and not only between humans mm -hmm. and other animals, but between other species and each other, mm -hmm. right? So for example, it's a very common thing to see a lion walking among a herd of buffalo and the buffalo are not running because they know mm -hmm. the buffalo, the lion is not hungry at that moment. Right, right, right. right? Very interesting. So as, we, as we all connect, right? We, mm. as humans, we tend to be too disconnected, mm -hmm. right? And so you we start to have these first feelings of empathy, right? We yes. start to make these mm -hmm. early connections mm -hmm. and we need to follow that. It's a good thing, but we right. need to follow it more and understand that it's it's not just this very simple duality. It's not uh, this idea that, okay, I should not eat any meat anymore ever again because I yeah. don't want to kill anything. Right, right. Because if, again, if we're, when we're eating just vegetables, yes. fruits, we're still killing stuff. Mm -hmm. Those the the farms that are doing monocropping, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they kill so many animals. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. They, right? So we, so even if I were a vegan or a vegetarian, I need to be even more responsible about my food choices, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? It should again st still be from the small farms where things are grown responsibly, sustainably, or mm -hmm. even like regenerative agriculture, et cetera. Very interesting. It's all about balance, right? 
yeah, yes. restore the balance. Yes, right, exactly. It's so the balance is important. And in when we look at the balance, and again, we look at the human, we're we are an omnivore. Mm-hmm. We're not herbivores. We mm-hmm, don't have mm-hmm. multiple stomachs to eat grass. Yeah. Yeah. And so our physiological purpose in this world is to actually consume a balanced diet. Mm-hmm. Right. Otherwise, we will upset the balance. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Go, right. We go too far in one direction. We will upset the balance. So what about detoxing? Like, let's go there for now. Mm. Uh, heavy metals. Mm. Like, how is that? I know it's like wide topic that we can even do like another another yes. in- interview video on that. Um, give us some tips. Like, how can people detox? Yeah. Some simple tips that we can do on a daily basis so we can obviously raise the consciousness and activate the third eye, mm-hmm. right? Cl- yes. Clean the yes. pineal gland, right? Decalcify yes. the pineal gland. What Absolutely. are the foods that we, we should mm-hmm. consume or, or, or how mm-hmm. can we do it in a simple way? So I think most, probably most of your viewers will be aware, like, you know, exercising is good, you know, because you, you got to get all the juices flowing, so to mm-hmm. say, the lymph, the blood, all the systems are moving. Uh, so exercise is good. Keep yourself hydrated properly. This is mm-hmm. good. You keep the water flowing through the body. Yeah. And some people are aware there are many different plants that will do like chelation, meaning they will grab heavy metals. Mm-hmm. But this is a little bit risky. We People tend to go overboard. And then because when chelation means to combine to the heavy metal, but it creates another toxic compound. Oh, wow. And so this could still overload the body. Mm -hmm. So in order to assist further, the earth itself provides amazing things. So we think, okay, food, water, sunlight, Mm -hmm. right? Making sure we're grounded. These Mm -hmm. are all great things to help our systems. But the earth itself gives us some amazing tools. Clay, Mm -hmm. which is actually, and we know many animals seek out clay when they don't feel good. That would help to bind in our gut. Mm -hmm. Folic acid, humic acid, you may have heard. This is another one um, which helps now. And that goes all through the body to help detox. That also does some chelation. My favorite is a zeolite. Mm -hmm. And especially there's one PBX zeolite, which is the smallest that we've we've been able to make it very small so it can go everywhere in the body. Mm -hmm. And it will grab heavy metals and actually heavy metal ions, it will grab and capture them and just Mm -hmm. carry them out of the body by riding the water. Mm -hmm. And it's a very, very uh, kind of simple process. Whereas like our body has its own complicated detox mechanism where it goes in different phases and uses all the different organs where we, and we need metabolites, meaning we need other things because we, we take a toxin and then we actually create another toxin and we, mm-hmm. we kind of step it down. Yeah. But the zeolite just kind of encapsulates heavy metal ions and then carries them out on the water through our tears, through our sweat, wow. through our urine, Beautiful. et cetera. Yeah. Especially there's, when it comes to, when it comes to clay, you can get good clay just about anywhere. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to folic acid, I really only like the boo. And when it comes to zeolite, I really only like the touchstone PBX and PB. Um, and so the, and these, these are from the earth. These are things that the earth provides. They're not food, they're mm-hmm. not water, right? but they are provided to us by the earth. They're natural things. Um, you wanna be careful because there are synthetic zeolites we wanna okay. stay away from. Okay. And uh, and you'll see, right, I have information or. Of course, you can share information. In I will, below. absolutely. I will share your website below in description. Yeah. And also, if there are any interesting information we just shared in this, uh, yeah, in this sure. interview, we I'll... can additionally to that share as well. Sure, sure. Love so, it, love it. Mm-hmm. Great, great. Yeah, there's, um, I'll give you another uh, quick tip, which, yeah, you can find in my videos. Um, MSM is great to help with detox. Um, mm-hmm. Most people will say they never heard of MSM, but you'll see... It's very common sold in sports stores, health stores as a, like a joint supplement, like a okay. glucosamine and chondroitin and MSM will be in small letters. Okay. But if you get just MSM, cause it's, it's actually cheap. Mm-hmm. So it's not really good for business, but it's, right, it's, right, very, right. it's very powerful. So it's a cheap supplement we can get to help us detox because Beautiful. it, it, it 
lowers the energy needed for our cells to absorb and to excrete. Love it. Love so it. It's, Beautiful. Um, it's so tell point. us last before we wrap up with mm -hmm. Vitagenics. I did check the mm -hmm. website. You guys are collaborate collaboration between healers and doctors. I think it's very cool. So, oh, so how can I support you? How can people, you know, if they need, like, what do you guys do? You coach people, you, you educate people. What, how, how can people find you if they, if they want to talk to you? What, what kind of coaching programs do you have? Um, share more information mm -hmm. with us. Sure. So if you go to vitagenics.me, that would be the website and that will link, you'll see where I have courses mm -hmm. and I'm actually currently using, um, teachable platform. Okay. So it's like, uh, Vita, uh, what is it? Vitagenics.teachable.com or something like that. It will link there. And I have my primary course, Heal, Shield, Live. Love it. And that gives all the background information, a very holistic perspective. Uh, there's a bunch of free videos. So mm -hmm. I encourage people go to my courses, grab all the free stuff to get familiar with it. I even have a free course on histamine issues. I have a patron Q and A, which is a subscription again mm -hmm. on the same place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where people can join me twice a week. Uh, yeah. And you can see the recordings from yeah. past. So you can hear clients, right? And also you'll see a link where you can just hire me for coaching, uh, which is, you know, I have limited time, but of course I do do, if we want to say life coaching or health coaching, mm -hmm. et cetera. Oh, um, you take yeah, some so special, special people. <laughs> You yeah, have to be special to, call, to work with Victor. I'm joking. <laughs> as long as you have time and capacity, um, definitely. Yeah, yeah, Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I've so enjoyed this, this, this uh, conversation with you. And I feel like I want to know from people, what do you guys think? Leave some questions below because we, we might do another one. So we can do follow up if you guys are interested. And uh, I think um, there is like so many different angles. We can, even, we can even approach this topic. So I feel like we should do another follow up. What do you think? Oh, it sounds great, Marietta. I actually I could think of many things I would love yeah. to discuss with you from also yeah. from me um, viewing your content. I thought, wow, okay, we need to collaborate. There's yeah, so yeah. I do. feel like this is just the beginning. We can totally do another one. We can we can dive deeper and uh, you know, like my my um, niche or or what I what mm -hmm. I'm trying to achieve here is really bringing the 3D and 5D because my background is super analytical attorney, but I wrote a book called Love is the Law, which is like another paradox, right? So it's yes. really like coming from two different, uh, you know, realities. Yes. And, and that's sort of somehow I feel like that's my gift for humanity. But yeah, absolutely yeah. love collaborating with people like you. And thank you so much for coming. And no, my uh, pleasure, my pleasure. I'm eager to introduce you to my people. And my, like I, also have, I have a Facebook group. And so they'll, they'll, they'll see you through this and then, um, yeah. And again, we'll do some more videos so I can Absolutely. introduce more about what you do. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so much, Victor. Thank you yeah. guys for tuning Thank in. You. Stay tuned for more videos. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye. Oh, awesome.